I think on a very fu- fundamental level, for me, uh, art means a way of seeing things uh, from morning till night. How you see things. Um, I think you can see things artfully and be aware of everything, or you can not see anything and just walk through life. So generally speaking, I think it's a more enhanced way of uh, receiving the world visually. Um, I don't mean to sound kind of convoluted, but I think that's fundamental for me. That was Lo Song Gyatso. He is a Tibetan painter and digital artist, born in Lhasa and based in the USA. Yakpo Collective had the pleasure to interview him for our first Spotlight series. But before we jump into his art, it's worth mentioning that Gyatso is also an actor. He was the character Lord Chamberlain in Martin Scorsese's 1997 film, Kundun. When asked what art means to Gyatso, he stated that he was always drawn to visual imagery. It was when he started to paint on an actual canvas in the early 90s that he was really inspired to create art that is Tibetan in some ways, which is not necessarily a replica of traditional Tibetan art, but Tibetan nevertheless. When living in a small apartment in the East Village in New York City, he had nothing Tibetan on the walls but didn't want only tankas, so he created this painting of a Tibetan bather. Why did he choose to depict a bather? Let's hear what he has to say. Bather is a, almost a cliché subject uh, in, in the art uh, world. You, you have paintings of bathers from Spain and France and Italy, England, everywhere in America, but there were no Tibetans, and yet Tibetans were great bathers, right? Hot springs all over Tibet, people would go on pilgrimage and spend time in the baths, and enjoy the water and the spring and the heat and all of that and there were no paintings so i created one it was a way to have something to bend on my wall that was uh i didn't want to pretend to be a religious person by having tankas everywhere so i created this painting so it was a way of reconnecting uh, with myself with my past uh, but then you get into styles of artwork that's you know photorealism or impressionism or etc cetera, etc cetera, which is not tibetan but I didn't want to paint her in a tanka style, uh, not that I could necessarily. Uh, so I looked to Tibetan um, kind of material culture. And uh, so a lot of, in this painting, the cloud formation uh, and, the, and the carpet she's sitting on, uh, and it, has, it goes back to Tibetan weaving uh, styles, carpets and weavings, etc. And the style of the, the body, is painted with uh, uh, a strong emphasis on linear, on line work, like in tanka painting. Um, so, uh, and for instance, with the perspective, the carpet is not in kind of in Western perspective, uh, in infinity perspective, which is seems very un-Tibetan. If you if you look at Tibetan paintings, old tankas, etc., and you look at the houses and tables, things that have angles, they're not in perspective. Uh, in a kind of uh, Renaissance style of perspective. They are, in the perspective, you see what you want to see. So what looms large for you is what's interesting to yourself. So for instance, the carpet is completely flat because I want to see the Tibetan carpet. I don't want to see it in perspective, disappearing into, into the distance. So that was my way of not only uh, choosing a subject that was Tibetan, but of trying to build some uh, conceptual underpinnings of Tibetan thinking, worldview, and art. When I first looked at the painting, what struck me were the color schemes and the colorful circular shapes being wrapped around by these organic curves. It certainly sparked a feeling of joy, which led me to notice something similar in his ongoing work called the Happiness Series. While the color palette from the cloud formation shares some similarities with the colors from the Happiness Series, Gyatso's shapes and line work in the Happiness series are much more abstract. This came about from his interest in photography, where he played around and manipulated them digitally using Photoshop, curious to catch the essence of an image, to dig deeper rather than merely taking notice of the outer skin, as Gyatso mentioned. From there, the Happiness series was then conceptualized into paintings. Gyatso felt that only through painting, he was able to control all the colors and the parameters of the canvas. The colors from his works are inspired by the Tibetan weaving culture, Tibetan folk art, and tanka paintings. He's always interested in how these natural color combinations create a sense of a Tibetan environment. 
he mentions that different societies and cultures possess a set of color palettes. And in that way, Tibetan culture has its own unique color palette. He was also inspired to create these paintings because he was fascinated by the lightheartedness of Tibetan culture and its people. When you read uh, about Buddhist philosophy and uh, psychology, uh, the things in Tibetan culture that have led for Tibetans to be a people that laugh a lot uh, and you know, can take a lot in stride and enjoy uh, each other's company in such lightness, there's a lightness to Tibetan culture that we have to maintain. When it becomes, because it's very easy for us to become bogged down. As we become more British and more French and more Indian and more Chinese in Tibet, it's very easy to become heavier. And I think uh, it's, it, it's such a shame for us to lose, lose our lightness. And uh, so, yeah, so happiness and a lot of, and when people say, I'm, they think, oh, I'm painting pretty pictures of flowers and things of happiness. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about the essential understanding of that I think all Tibetans, and not just high lamas and uh, high geishis and high yogic practitioners, the average Tibetan in Tibet for hundreds of years, it seeped down to them. It's like, a, you know, in terms of American economic talk, it's a... a seep down kind of thing. It seeped down to the average Tibetan uh, in, across Tibet over the centuries that uh, change is inevitable, change is constant, uh, impermanence is, uh, is a state of fact, uh, and that kindness and compassion uh, tend to lead to a happier state of mind. I mean, these are very fundamental, simple things. Uh, which basically evolved us psychologically into people, I think, generally happy. I mean, happier than most people. I, this sounds chauvinistic, but I think happier than most people in most, most societies. Lo Sang Gyatso currently works from his studio in Virginia, USA. He shared some thoughtful advice to both emerging artists and art viewers. <laughs> 